All right, what's up, y'all? Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to wire up a relay to your fuel pump. Um, typically, you're gonna to wanna to do this if you're making bigger power um, and you're trying to get the most out of your stock fuel pump. Um, there are other reasons, but it's always a good idea to do because most OEM setups won't give 12 volts to your fuel pump. This way, you'll be getting power straight from the battery to make sure your fuel pump is getting as much power as possible. Obviously, it'll pump more fuel and more consistently if it's just getting constant power. So let me show you, guys, show you guys how to do it. It's pretty simple. So mine is actually already all the way set up, but I'm gonna be redoing it all, making it a little bit nicer, and I thought this is the perfect time to show you guys how to do it. So this is our relay, and basically your average one, the one we're gonna be using in this video, is a four prong relay. So one is gonna be ground and power for the relay itself, and then basically one is gonna be an in, the trigger, and one is going to be out, that's going to be the one going to your fuel pump. Now if you look closely, these are all numbered. And any relay I've ever got has been numbered. If you're not, you're probably, if it's not, you're probably in for a world of hurt. Alrighty, so in our case, so for wire, wiring up the fuel pump, 30 is always going to be our power source. So that's going to be a wire going straight from the positive on your battery, going straight to this terminal. So that's going to be a live 12 volt all the time. This one right here, 85, is going to be our ground. So that's the same exact thing, but just going from the other side of the battery, that's going to be our ground, or you can run it to any ground on the chassis. 86 is going to be our trigger wire. So basically this will be the old wire from the OEM harness that gives signal to the fuel pump. And then this will be our new wire going to the fuel pump that is now going to be a constant 12 volt from here, which is going to be more ideal than that original wire going to the fuel pump. Now here's my actual setup. So this is already wired up super good. I was having fuel pump problems, so we've got fancy 10 gauge wire running all the way through into the tank. But basically you've got our power wire coming straight from the battery, and you're going to want a fuse on this. I believe I have a 30 amp fuse, and you can just put an inline fuse, I'll show you guys. Then you have your ground wire right here, and then you've got wire coming from the relay to the fuel pump. This will be your power wire. And then... We've got our signal wire. This is why I'm fixing this, because that's a little loose, which is a little sketchy. And this is going to be our signal wire. And so that's basically the wire that gets power. You can find that by keying your car on and you'll see that it gets power. It shouldn't be getting power when the car is not keyed on. So it should only get 12 volts when the car is on. Now, if you've got an E36, it is your green wire and your fuel pump harness. This is our 12 volt going to the relay. You can get these little inline fuse holders at AutoZone. It's basically just a wire. You can crimp that in there, throw it in line, and then you just get a regular old fuse and throw it in there. Now, as you can see, my current setup is a little bit ratchet. So we've got some fancy new parts to make it super nice, super clean looking. So we've got a few things here. This is our new relay, just a regular regular old four pin relay got all this off as of amazon now before i had random pins going to it and some of them were just a little bit loose which is a little bit sketchy sketchy especially in drifting where there's lots of vibrations and you're throwing the car around a lot so this connector will go straight in here and it's all waterproof and very nice and we can go ahead and bolt this to the chassis with that we've got some good old wire loom just to make it all look nice we've got some 10 gauge butt connectors that we'll be using to connect everything and just some more 10 gauge wires so we can move our relay into the trunk for a cleaner install. Also, while we're working on this stuff, it's always smart to disconnect your battery. All right, so I've officially realized the reason why the battery was moved from the original location, because you cannot fit it in this way. It will not fit between here. Try going over, no room. So the only way we can do this without getting a new battery is taking these bad boys out and they're riveted in, so about to do some grinding. Quite an interesting position I'm in if you're claustrophobic. Should not be a fun place to be in. We basically got them all grounded out. I'm not gonna record while I'm doing it because I'm not an idiot, but just gotta get this last one. And just like that, you can see into the other side. Now let me get out of here before I have a fucking panic attack. It's a little bit insane how perfect the fitment is on this battery, it's like, a millimeter off from the roll cage. So 
So now we're just gonna find where we want to put our relay. I want mine to be right about here. And we'll just self tap right in there. So now we can leave that there, and figure out all of our lengths. All right, so since we've got our fuel relay, that's gonna be our spot for it. The wires coming from, to give it ground and power from the battery are already coming from back there. So they're gonna be long enough. So this is our 12 volt power. This is our ground here. And those are both coming from the battery. So those are both long enough to make it to that location. Now this is our signal wire right here. And this is about as far as it stretches. So we're gonna have to extend that to reach back there as well as the wire coming from the fuel pump. We're gonna have to extend this one too. And you're also gonna want a pair of scissors. I've got some heavy duty metal cutters because they work super well. And then uh, wire strippers. This is an automatic pair, as you can see, you just do that and it does it for you. But there are also manual ones where you kind of put it in there and you can just pull yank on it. Here are our manual ones. I don't use these because I got the fancy ones. All right, so first up, we're just gonna extend all of our wires that need to be extended to reach into the trunk. So first off, we've got a wire coming from the fuel pump that will be giving power to the pump. As you can see, we've got maybe two feet of wire we need to make up. There is a little bit coming from the connector, but better longer than not long enough. Also, we're gonna be running it through the middle there, so we do need it to be maybe three feet or so. So we're gonna cut off this connector and then cut our wire and then mate them together. All right, so now we've got our old wire with the end cut off. We've got our new wire cut to length. Also, you can find this wire at AutoZone. As you can see, it's about the right length. Now we're just gonna crimp those two together. First, we're gonna strip the ends with our wire strippers, and then we're gonna crimp them down inside of our butt connector. Then we'll use a lighter to shrink this heat shrink down. We'll have a good weatherproof connection. All right, so now we've got our two wires ready to be crimped. And now it's always a good idea to twist these up. It doesn't really make a difference, but it makes it easier to slide into the butt connector, like so. Now we've got both of our wires shoved in there. We're just gonna go ahead and crimp them down. So as you can see, it's a little bit dirty, but depending on the wire size you're using, I'm gonna put the butt connector inside of this top section. We're gonna be using the yellow section because this is 10 gauge wire. We got it stuck in there. Go to squeeze as hard as we can. Squeeze. Now we have a nice solid connection. You can yank on these real good. It's not coming apart. Now we're gonna, depends on the connection you got from the store, but it's always a good idea to make sure it's waterproof just in case. These ones come with heat shrink already installed on them. So we can just heat it up and shrink it up. Now we're just gonna repeat that for the fuel pump signal wire. Now we should be able to hook it all up. As far as connecting the connector goes, um, once you've put it on the relay, you cannot see which wire is for which pin, nor can you see it on the actual connector itself. It isn't coded, but I have figured it out and it only plugs in one way, so it's hard to mess up. So basically blue, the blue wire is 30. I'll leave a link in the description for this exact one if you just wanna use the same thing. So the blue wire is pin 30, white is pin 86, uh, the red wire is pin 87 and the black wire is 85, which will be useful when we're actually connecting our wires to where they're supposed to go. All right, y'all, I apologize for the noise. Uh, so now we're gonna begin wiring up our harness one by one. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the easiest one for me, which is gonna be the one coming from the fuel pump. Now we're gonna want the wire that is giving power to the fuel pump to be our pin 87. In our case, pin 87 is the red wire. So we're gonna hook those two up together. These wires come pre-stripped. I'm gonna strip it a little bit more because the butt connectors is 10 gauge and this is 16 gauge. But if we strip it a little bit more, we can twist it up and fold it over itself to make it a larger size. Alrighty, so we've got that all nice and wired up. Heat shrunk and butt connected. Now our next wire is going to be the wire that we extended here that is coming from the chassis, chassis signal. So this is going to be the wire that gets 12 volts when you turn it on, but shouldn't be getting 12 volts when the car is not keyed on. And that is going to be going to 86 on the relay, which in our case is going to be our white wire. So we'll go ahead and connect those. Now that we've got those two wires all wired up, we're gonna head to the trunk of the car to finish the last two wires, which are gonna be power from the battery and ground from the battery. In your case, it could be ground from the chassis, 
which isn't a problem. You'll just follow the same exact thing I do for the ground on the battery to the chassis. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the fused power from our positive terminal on the battery, which is gonna be giving it a constant source of 12 volt power. Um, you are gonna wanna definitely hook up a fuse to that. In our case, we're using a 30 amp fuse. Basically, you just follow the rules that we've done with all of our other stuff in terms of just strip both ends off the wire, crimp it up, heat shrink it, and you're good to go. And throw a fuse in it, and it's good to go. Now, in our case, well, in everybody's case, on a relay, the power is gonna go to pin 30. In our case, that is gonna be the blue wire. So we're gonna be taking our positive terminal here. We've already got the wire hooked up to it. We've got our fuse there, and we've got our end cut off here, and we're gonna be taking this end and attaching it it to the blue end on our harness. Now we've got all four finished. This black one here is gonna be our pin 85. So if you're hooking up your relay, you want your 85 to go to a ground. In my case, it's heading to the battery. In your case, it could be to the chassis or the battery. Any good ground will do. Now we've got everything hooked up. Now we can actually plug the relay into the harness and give it a test. All right, we've got the battery all hooked up and tightened. Relays wired up, let's give it a test. All right, y'all, here goes nothing. Yep, pro relay installer right here. And you can be too if you follow this tutorial. First T. I don't know if you guys can hear the fuel pump, but it did turn on. I can turn the car on, I guess, to show you guys. <laughs> definitely cranking for a little bit longer than usual but yeah starts right up now we're just gonna tidy up all the wiring so it doesn't look like a mess and just like that it's starting to look all nice and fancy got some wire loom on it got this at AutoZone pretty much everything I've used in this video is from AutoZone so shouldn't be any problem doing this yourself it's coming out super nice Whew, a freaking finger workout trying to get that loom on there but I'm so stoked on how this came out I was just gonna not gonna loom it but if you're doing this freaking loom it because it looks freaking professional let me show you guys i still got a little bit more cleanup but it looks sick all right so we've got coming from the pump got our signal wire here tied into the harness we still need to clean this section up but just look at this obviously everything else is dirty but man this came out so legit i'm stoked on this all right y'all this shit came out so mint I'm gonna test it one more time, make sure everything works good. We still need a self tapper to hold the relay to the trunk area. But yeah, definitely get wire loom if you're doing this because it looks freaking amazing. I also wanna get like a bigger loom to encapsulate all of the smaller looms to make it look even better, but check this out. And obviously that rear section is gonna be all covered off came out freaking mint basically i just want to get a loom to put all three of these together so it's not like a bunch of wires just like one big loom all right hopefully you guys enjoyed that video or found it helpful or just had fun watching it if you guys liked it drop a like comment subscribe catch you next time